Hey there, my name is Pete and I like pictures. A couple of weeks ago I made a video in which I showed you a way how to merge your HDR files. No, how to merge your uh, bracketed exposures into one HDR file outside of uh, Lightroom then import it and do all of the um, tone mapping work inside of Lightroom. That was necessary because um, Lightroom versions, previous Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC did not have a feature to merge um, your bracketed exposures, but they had the uh, feature to tone map them. Since Lightroom CC or Lightroom 6, um, this is now possible inside of Lightroom and it's very, very simple. So um, I just show you a way how to do it or the way how to do it. I have uh, two examples here. This one, um, let's just check check the shot just like well that is the um let's say the basic expo exposure you see lots of details are missing in the shadows and then the highlights the highlights are not really uh, full of details uh the next shot i underexposed that shot two f-stops and so i have uh, a lot of information in the highlight area and then i overexpose the shot two f-stops so i get more information in the shadow area. What is important with bracketed exposures for um, HDR fusion important is to keep the focal length and the aperture constant so that you don't change the angle of view by changing the um, focal length. Of course, pictures should match. And you also don't want to change the depth of field. That is, um, defined by the aperture of course so if we take a look at the first shot we have ISO 100 it's also maybe a good idea to keep the ISO constant to just to to not introduce noise so I had I was on the tripod for that shot or not me <laughs> the camera was in the tripod for that shot so um, I was able to use um, comparatively long exposure times that first shot was shot with 0.4 seconds, the second shot was shot with one tenth of a second, and the third shot was shot with 1.6 seconds. And you see ISO, focal length, and aperture were constant. And what can we do? We just select those three shots, right click, and go to Photo Merge HDR. And Lightroom does one thing, it creates an HDR preview. We do not have as much options in Lightroom as we have in uh, other, in, in more specified HDR software. We only have auto align. That is in case you shot freehand. And uh, I made the second uh, bracketing um, freehand. So we'll see if that works. We have auto tone. So Lightroom already makes um, sort of processing you can change that of course and we have the de-ghost amount and you see i have medium checked and i have the checkbox show de-ghost overlay also activated and we see that um red part that is the de-ghost overlay if we click to click on high, we uh, Lightroom builds another preview, and I show you something with that shot. That is something that I found while playing around a bit because it seems that the de ghost um, algorithm that works in Lightroom is not really that um, amazing, and I think I hope they will work on that because you see Lightroom detects areas if we go to high that most definitely do not have ghosting. What is ghosting? Ghosting is if something moves um, during uh, the um, or in one of those uh, bracketed exposures. So there is probably not much <laughs> movement going on or was more, probably not much uh, movement going on on that piece of wood, maybe some reflection or something. Of course, in the background, we have this fountain um, and well, in the waves. So what happens if we click click on merge? That takes a bit, of course. Even though Lightroom um, 6 slash CC has become pretty fast compared to previous versions because 
uh, one of the reasons obviously is that it uses the CPU of your graphics card. If you have a graphics card that is compatible to Lightroom, that really helps and to speed up your workflow. And we'll just wait until the HDR is created. Um, maybe one interesting thing to know is that any kind of processing you did with the uh, base shots does not affect the HDR. So um, processing your shots, doing a cropping them or something um, does not affect Lightroom always takes the original unedited shots. And so we see that is the already processed pre-processed by Lightroom pre-processed HDR and it looks good. I like it. But let's zoom in to that point where we had the red overlay and we already see, even though the um, preview is not completely loaded, you see, oh, there is a lot of noise going on. And also in the background. So that is not really cool. I don't like that. Oops. Same here, that part, and here where we have the red overlay. That is not really clean. So what can we do? I'll just delete that shot. Uh, I can't delete it from the Smart Collection. Yeah, of course. Then we'll keep it. And we'll do it again. To um, uh, Photo Merge, HDR. And what we do now is to click on None. So we have no de-ghosting or we can go to low or medium, whatever works for you. Um, that is probably a bit of trial and error. error. Um, so to find out what works best, let me click on merge. And wait a bit. Wait, maybe, I don't know. I have nothing to drink here. So I would drink something in the meantime, but I've got nothing here. I could go, but then you'd be all alone with your computer. So, <laughs> okay, here we are. And you see um, Lightroom already added um, something to the name of the image. You see minus HDR in that case, minus three, because I already made two. <laughs> I played around a bit. The one before was HDR. Well, why is it called HDR three? Interesting. Yeah, whatever. It is uh, HDR. And you see there, there's something happening, depending on. But that is much smoother, much cleaner. We do not have any any um, noise going on here. So in that case, I would probably go with that one without the de-ghosting. And we can just simply edit that shot, process that shot. One thing that is really cool, because we have all of the information of the three base shots in that shot, Lightroom created a 16-bit DNG, a RAW file, which is amazing. We have a lot of information in that shot. And because it's a 16-bit file, um, the sliders already, uh, no, not already, the sliders behave a bit differently. So for example, with the exposure slider, you can not only go to minus five, but you can go uh, to minus 10 and to plus 10. So if you have more than the uh, three different exposures than I had in that shot, sometimes maybe it's uh, it's a better thing. I, in my personal experience, and that's what I read uh, by a couple of people that I really trust and that I really think uh, who know a lot about that, they say most of the time it's not um, even advised to use more because you will not be able to capture so much more information. But you have a, w a much wider range that you can use. And we can edit that. So maybe raise exposure a bit here. Maybe bring the shadows down a bit. Um, maybe bring the whites down a bit. I won't bore you with the editing of that. Something that, uh, because I the, that was shot with the um, 1855 kit lens, you see there's a bit of chromatic aberration going on. If you look at the house here, maybe we can zoom in a bit more and you see it more, it's more apparent that orangish thing. We can go to lens correction, basic, remove chromatic aberration. And they're gone. See, 
before, after. That works pretty well. Uh, and then you can edit the shot to your liking. And today I played around a bit and I made, these were from, uh, from, a, from a tripod and I made um, a freehand um, exposures. You see that shifts a bit. I do have a steady hand, but well, you can. It's a difference if you shoot from a tripod or freehand. And we can try that. That was on a graveyard, a very old graveyard in Munich. And just also select them, Photo Merge HDR. And that's where Auto Align comes to play. Lightroom tries to match these three shots. And we'll see if it does a good job. So, well, can zoom in. Looks good to me. Zoom out and let's check whether there's a lot of ghosting going on. Should be probably in the in the leaves, but it was was not much wind that day. Today it was pretty cold though. Uh, especially because I had to wait until all of the the people were gone because that um, cemetery is not in use anymore. It lost at least not as a cemetery, but it's more like a recreational area and people go for a walk there and jog there. And you see, and there's, there's a bit of red here. Click on medium. It's hard to see because of the red leaves. Let me check. Um, yeah, it seems there's not so much Ghosting going on. Ghosting on the graveyard. Now I got it. Should have come up with a joke about that. It just struck me now. So looks good. We click on merge. And um, hope for the best. And I think I know that it works because I tried it before. And um, I even at the time of recording that video, I already posted that shot or the processed version of that shot. The great thing is, and that is really something that I think, because it seems that the auto align feature works pretty well. Um, it is a good thing for um, if you are in really difficult lighting conditions, you can set your camera to uh, make a um, a bracketed exposure, pretty simple, even freehand, and let Lightroom process that shot. And you see, well, there's, is it just the preview? Why is that? So that is really, that's not really in focus. But I was at five points at f5.6 and I focused on the background. Yeah, it's not really, it's not really that sharp. And it was in focus, but that is probably the shakiness in the rendering, but it's okay-ish. Uh, would have been much better with uh, a tripod, of course, or at least I hope that. Um, well, we saw that in the shop before, that the quality is pretty, pretty okay-ish. And I made a preset out of the edit, it's that one. Yeah, it looks terrible. Obviously, what Lightroom did was to give me something very different than in the uh, in the shot before, because my preview, uh, my 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 preset does not work with that shot. That's funny. Should have tried that. But of course, it now is. It's a good good base. Again, we can bring down the highlights. And bring down the whites, and you see ooh, that could work, and we can make something out of that. So, um, well, I could show you the shot in case, yeah, that's something how to find those shots because they will be imported to the catalog, but sometimes it's not easy to find them. So, we can easily do that by going in the library filter. Either go to uh, the catalog or the folder you were in before, that one in that case, and you go to text search, any searchable field contains all, and you just 
add minus HDR and it loads and you see all of the created and that was the shot that I processed before um, all of the created DNGs um, that Lightroom did. So this one's for today. Hope this gave you a bit of an, uh, an overview over the HDR Fusion, that is, which is new in Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC by, till next time.